Hi everybody, this is the final installment of the power supply, as you can see here, all done now. And my plexiglass came through the weekend, so I just worked my way and uh, I've finished it now. <clears throat> as you know, uh, three channels, one, two, three, you got the knob for voltage and knob for current. I decided to use 10 turn pot for the current as well. Uh, the only reason is because, uh, as you know, I've uh, I bought the equipment from eBay and I've got a lot of 10 turn pots now. So you know what? Let's just use them. What's the point of buying things if you're not going to use them? I got my banana plugs here, banana jacks there. You can see here, channel one, channel two, channel three, um, and I use my Dremel to um, engrave the plexiglass. As you can see here, uh, I've got triple output power supply. And we've got, uh, I just decided to give it a name. So I've got MJX3, which is a three output, 1.8, which is 1.8, uh, and TRD, which is Troiler Transformer. So I got from zero to 10 volt at zero to 1.8 amp. As you can see here, I've got volt amps sitting there, and I've just drew a little line there. Then I've got my uh, output here. I've got my constant current. I've got my I, which is current set and display. So if I just turn it on, as you can see here, one thing is these displays are, as you can see, they're quite jumpy. It's not the actual power supply. Um, I have tested it with uh, my flu uh, multimeters and it's stable. It's just these uh, displays are, they just got, I think they got issues. And another thing with these displays is that um, they're not that accurate. So they're out by about uh, uh, almost about 100 millivolt. Uh, that's something that unfortunately I didn't test them properly before. Um, before I put them on my power supply, before I wanted to put them on power supply, uh, I just bought them from eBay, and the only thing I did was just change the display driver to, uh, you know, accommodate for the big uh, LED uh, seven segment display that I wanted to put it there. Uh, the some of them can't wash out, as you can see here. They don't. They're not that bright, but it's it's not the actual LED display. It's the plexiglass making it like look like that because I have looked at it off behind the plexiglass, and they're all bright and they, they don't look like this. Um, anyway, uh, this is channel one, so let's just hook up my uh, current load to it. Turn the channel on. So at the moment we're pulling 1.2 amp. So if I just go down, sorry, it's set into one point. At the moment is to set, so I'm set at uh, the current limit at 1.2 amp, and I'm drawing 55 milliamps. So if I go up, as you can see, it's showing me how much I'm pulling. Obviously, how the current that I've set is 1.2 amp. So if I go and I'll start pull up, there we go. So we should almost go into constant current. There we go. It's just going into constant current and the LED is turned off. So if I go down, there we go. Come out of the constant current. So I can go here and take the current higher. So say 1.4 amp. So we go here, we are 96, 950 millivolt. We go up 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4. There we go, it's gone into constant current mode. As I said, these displays are not accurate. So as you can see here, it's almost out by about 50 or 60 millivolt. And another thing is, as I mentioned before, my shunt resistor uh, is not a precise shunt resistor. So I'm going to get some errors on my. Uh, current sense as well that's why i mentioned before about 50 or 60 milliamp error so that's that's not an issue this is perfectly fine uh, as you can see here stable here so i can again what i showed before so let me just come out of the thing turn it off and you can see zero volt and we can go up Yeah, max at uh, nine and a half volt. That's where I put it, uh, nine and uh, sixty volt. Uh, what I need to do is I need to um, put better op amps there. At the moment, I've got the uh, Motorola op amps in there, which are the JFET old. I think they're discontinued uh, op amps there. So uh, they unfortunately their uh, offset voltage is not that great. I think it's about five or six millivolts. So uh, I'm, I'm sure if I put a better uh, op amp in there, I can improve the stability and everything of the whole uh, power supply but as it stands the way it is i'm perfectly happy with it uh, it does what i wanted to do and uh, as you can see here there we go all channels are on now and all channels are off now 
so I've got current being drawn and current set so I can just bring the current down there we go so it's set into zero and you can see the constant current LED is gone on so if I bring it up say if we put into there we go 300 milliamp and we start pulling current up oh, I need to turn the thing on Oh yeah, the voltage. Ah, oh. had to give it some voltage. Say we go into seven volts. Yeah, seven volts. And we start putting current time. It's going into constant current. Oop, turn it on. So we set our current at the. There we go. 300 milliamp, so I just bring the current down. There we go, and we kicked in. There we are. So I'm putting 280 millivolt, uh, sorry, milliamp. There we go, 200 milliamp. There we go, 100 milliamp, 90, 60, and 0 milliamp. So if I go up again. You should see it kick into constant current. There we go. There we are, constant current mode. So no matter how much current I'm trying to pull, I can't because I'm in constant current mode. There we go, bring it down, and it comes out of constant current mode. As you can see here. Uh, the only issue that I had with this uh, power supply build was uh, one thing was that uh, these uh, switches uh, the diameter for the hole that I need to make was one and a half uh, centimeters and my drill that I have uh, the chuck of the drill can only handle uh, we are one millimeter drill bits so what I had to do was I had to order some uh, things from eBay that made my life much easier and I didn't know it existed until a couple of days ago which are these I can pull them out. Yeah, these little odd shaped. They look like a Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah, uh, these uh, you use this to make uh, holes in your front panel or whatever you want. And you can see here the largest hole that this can make is 3.2 centimeters. These are really great and really really easy to work with. So I'm glad I've bought these. Uh, there's three different sizes in this little pouch that I bought from eBay. And you can see here, so I got that big one, I got a smaller one, and I got a little tiny one over here. There we are. So, that's a great purchase from old good old eBay. And uh, yeah, I'm glad this project is finished. I'm very happy with the, out the, with the result of it. Uh, it looks good. Uh, I used the Adobe Illustrator to design the whole front panel, as you can see here. Uh, I printed it on my printer and uh, what I did I just put it behind the plexiglass and then I used my Dremel to uh, engrave this so obviously I put some light behind the paper so I, the light can come through the paper through the plexiglass so I can see the the shadow of the letters then I just used my uh, Dremel to um, engrave the whole thing as you can see I got volt amps and all the rest of it uh, I decided that there were screw holes on top here to uh, fix the plexiglass into the aluminum but I decided not to because uh, it would have uh, meant that I had to drill through my uh, my uh, uh, you know engrave the text that I have here so what I decided to do I decided to just build this little uh, bracket thing here it just is holding it basically really tight so uh, you know it doesn't budge or anything like that uh, another thing here you can see here it's got little holes on top down here, I can see through the holes, I can see all the core voltages, the LEDs, uh, status LED for the core voltages here, so I know that everything is working properly. So down there, I can see my, uh, on the top there, my minus, and then I can see my uh, after pre-regulator and uh, voltage regulator there. So I've got my uh, plus 15 and minus 5 volt there. Same thing here, plus 15, minus 5 volt, plus 15, minus 5 volt, and my negative rail supplies all over there, down there. So... 
uh, it works out great. Uh, original plan was the, as you know, I did a video before. I did. I said that I'm going to use these heat sinks for the past transistor, but unfortunately, I had no way of, uh, you know, no means of uh, putting this into this enclosure to fix it into enclosure and stay there. So what I decided to do was to use these heat sinks instead. Not only uh, these are bigger. So you got better thermal, uh, you know, thermal uh, dissipation through than these, uh, but I, you know, these these were easier to mount into, as you can see here. I've got little uh, screws over there. So what I've done, I've just mounted, uh, took this and mounted it upside down like that. So they're on the top here, and the fact that they are near the holes of the power supply it means that the heat can just travel up and uh, they can dissipate the heat easily. Uh, through these uh, little heat sinks that I got here, so that's what I've done, and uh, uh, I did put this through its pace. So what, what I did last night, uh, throughout all, uh, uh, last night I just uh, connected my dummy load to all the channels and uh, obviously different ones, and uh, I just put everything at its maximum, so 1.5, uh, 1 1.6 amp, and I did it, uh, let it run through the morning, and uh, nothing blew up, nothing got damaged so it's working perfectly fine so I'm 100% sure it can uh, it can manage whatever I'm gonna throw at it so I'm, I'm glad you know I hope you enjoyed this uh, little mini series of the power supply build I hope it's been uh, entertainful like the way it's been to me uh, I've, I hope you learned something as I've learned a lot building this project and uh, I hope that uh, you decide to you know make your own power supply because it's a great adventure you learn a lot by you know building things that's that's the only way you learn electronics by building things and like you know fixing things and taking things apart so yeah oh one more other thing that uh, I forgot to mention is as you know my other power supply blew up as well uh, so um, in the process of doing that as well but I don't think I'm gonna uh, do a video series of building that because I've already done the power supply thing so uh, as you know on that power supply that I've got over there I uh, had three different uh, separate boards for the power supply but on this one I decided just to put the whole thing in one board so there we are same design everything the same so I'm just got here so I got three there because that was a free channel as well so that's what I'm gonna do uh, just put this in there once everything is done and ready uh, another thing, I've ordered some stuff from eBay. I'm just waiting for them to come. Um, uh, next thing I want to do is uh, see if I can build a CNC machine, something like that. Just uh, as a as a like a learning thing. I'm not in need of a CNC machine. It's just in some, just in uh, something. I just want to see if I can, you know, I can do or not. So I've ordered some printers from uh, from eBay, laser printers. Uh, I did a job load, I think it was about six or seven of them for about 30 quid. So I'm just waiting for them to come and see if I can salvage their stepper motors and stepper motor driver and see what I can do with them. Uh, another project that I'm uh, gonna do and I might do a video of it is uh, building a variable voltage reference. As you can see here, I did I built this voltage reference here as you can, uh, on uh, based on a ref01. But what I have here on my parts list, if I can grab it, uh, I have one of these, which are supposed to be very, very, very stable. Uh, you can see here, if the camera can zoom in, here we are, LM399. This got a little heater inside and a buried uh, xenodiode, so these are very stable. So I see if I can build a variable voltage reference based on this and I'm going to put in a little enclosure so every time I, um, if I'm building something and I need uh, a voltage reference then I can just uh, use that to uh, output whatever voltage I want. So that's another project, I'm probably going to take this apart or maybe I'll put this in that enclosure as well. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it. and. Uh, Hope you like the videos, the series of the power supply videos. If you like them, give it a thumbs up. And I hope you enjoyed it. And until next video and the next project, thanks for watching and goodbye.